Hello, and welcome back to another episode of FMDX for SDR Console. My name is Bryce Foster, coming back to you after a long hiatus in this very well-received series to talk a little bit about one of my favorite features, which is the data analyzer function of SDR Console. I think everyone who has stuck around, uh, perhaps waiting for this breakdown of this feature today, whether you've been listening to the past episodes or the VHF DX podcast that I host, I know I've discussed this topic quite a bit and I wanted to deep dive a little bit today into how to get this feature up and running and do some basic review. So I've recorded a dead band eight minute file of just my local band without any DX coming in to just be a basic playground to show you how this feature works today. And then in the next episodes, we'll talk about and review specific types of propagation and I'll talk about some tricks that I have to dig DX out of IQ files using the data file analyzer. Now what's pulled up right now is not actually the data file analyzer. It's the waterfall playback section in the default record and playback ribbon of SDR console. We reviewed this in episode four and I think it's cool, it's a super cool feature and a great way to get a basic idea of what the data file analyzer is except the data file analyzer is uh, what I consider to be a better version of this feature. So it addresses a couple weaknesses. So the first weakness of this uh, viewpoint is the resolution is not particularly good. It looks kind of grainy or noisy inside of each frequency, and it's hard to tell what's happening with these stations because it's designed to load fast and on basic computers. So if I'm picking on 104.9, which could be a DX frequency, I see two areas where signals might be coming in that I might wanna listen for in the file and see what's happening. So that would be here at 33 minutes past, and again at 36 minutes past. Keep that in mind to compare when we load this same file back in the data file analyzer, we're gonna see a lot more detail there. The other weakness of this particular viewpoint is going to be the uh, lack of dynamic frequency changes. So if you see on the left hand side of my screen where the audio and the playback is occurring, the frequencies are not changing as I move the mouse around. So if I click on 105.3, it will move the time to the time where I'm clicking. If you can see that here in this bar as I click around, but it doesn't change the frequency. It's stuck on 104.3 and I would have to move over to say 105.1 if I wanted to review this frequency here in the middle. So those are two key weaknesses and let's go and compare and see what it looks like over on the data file analyzer side of SDR console and kind of doing the same thing over there. So we're gonna stop this, we're gonna close this, and then we're gonna talk through a couple things that you will need to know to get up and running with the data file analyzer. First is how to enable it because it does not come enabled by default on SDR console. The next thing we're gonna talk about are all the options that you'll be encountered with when you wanna go load a file and some tips on how to quickly save and reload files so you don't have to run the analysis again, which does take a lot more time than the navigator feature that we just had pulled up. And we're gonna talk about some features to try and reduce the time that it takes to load these files, which really is the big downside of the data file analyzer. So let's get started with enabling it. So when you first load SDR console, if you haven't used this feature before, you're not going to see in the view ribbon here, the data file analyzer button. It's just gonna be blank and you'll see the dot, dot, dot select. So you'll click on that select, which I did, and I have this pulled up and this box checked where it says analyzer. If it's not checked on your side, make sure to check it, hit okay. It'll prompt you to restart SDR console. And when you reload it and navigate back to the view page, you will see data file analyzer here on your screen. So I'm gonna click it and we're gonna get this empty viewpoint right here. And let's just jump into loading a file. So you're gonna hit new on the left side to load a file from scratch and do the analysis on this file. I'm gonna pick the same one that we had pulled up in the navigator, the eight minute file centered on 104.7, and I'm gonna hit play. And if you want more information on what this window is here, it's exactly the same one we talked about in episode four when you go to load back an IQ file that you've recorded in SDR console. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play, and this new window is gonna pop up, which gives me some options on what I want to do with this IQ file that I wanna load in the analyzer. So generally, I leave the top two sections uh, at their defaults, but just keep in mind if you want to narrow down the time frame, if you say only wanted to play or review four minutes of this instead of eight minutes, you could bump this down to 32 and have it end prematurely, 
or move the start time up and the end time back, whatever you wanted to do to just pick out a certain part of your IQ file to, uh, to review, you could certainly do that here. You can also narrow it down to certain frequencies. I don't find this useful for FMDX because the maximum bandwidth is only 900 kilohertz. And almost always I wanna review the whole file, but you can play around. You can check this enable button and play around with the center frequency if you don't wanna see all the frequencies in your IQ recording. And finally, we have the update rate section. This I actually do play with sometimes. In general, I use the lines per second method and pick the highest number, which is 10. However, if you have a very long IQ file, perhaps you're recording overnight for Meteor Scatter, for example, the system has a maximum total lines. I believe it's 100,000. So you might need to pull this number down. And this number is just going to represent basically the granularity of detail. So when you have 10 lines per second, every second is going to be represented with a lot of real estate on your screen, and you're gonna get a much better idea of what's happening in every little second of DX that is going to show up on your screen. So I'm gonna uh, show this difference by loading first at one line per second, which is gonna be very quick to load on an eight minute file. And you're gonna see it only takes up a small amount of real estate here on the screen, not even the full height of my monitor. So if I pull this contrast back though, you can see much better detail and much cleaner viewpoints of what is happening, especially on your DX uh, frequencies here. You can see those two little bursts of signals I pointed out on 104.9, and then some more little signal activity down here that we might wanna check out. But if we load this now with, I think a better setting, which should be 10 lines per second, you're gonna see a lot more detail. Now it's gonna take maybe a second or two longer to load for this file. And if I'm adjusting the contrast here, like I went over in episode two, I can see now a lot of detail of what exactly happened on every frequency over this eight minute recording. And I can see not only those two bits of signal right here, but I can also see a couple more things. And that would be what I would think is meteor scatter. So I see what looks like a very weak meteor here. If I scroll down here, it looks like another meteor or perhaps aircraft scatter. And then finally one more burst of signal down here. So just within eight minutes in a dead band period, I found potentially three bits of meteor scatter that were not evident in the navigator waterfall view of the playback ribbon in SDR console. And that really is the biggest advantage of the data file analyzer. And then I'm gonna go ahead and um, actually wanna review another option real quick as it pertains to loading time. So I did talk about how long it can take to load sometimes. So if you had, let's say a two minute file or a two hour file with eight megahertz instead of an eight minute file with only two megahertz. Wow, that's confusing. Um, it basically, if you had a longer file with more frequencies, it would take much longer to load than these quick files. And it's going to take especially long if you don't have a graphics card in your computer. Now, if you do have a graphics card in your computer, like I have the RTX 3060, you can go into the NVIDIA CUDA section on the left-hand side of the window when you go to open up a new file and check this box. It will speed up the file review significantly, especially if you have a good graphics card made by NVIDIA in your computer. If you have an AMD or another kind of discrete graphics card in your computer, you may, might also wanna play around with the OpenCL. I've never used it because I've always had NVIDIA cards but it might help you speed up the loading times as well. So we're gonna go ahead and run this one more time and you can see this loading pretty fast. Down here, the rate says 1,087 megabytes per second. My experience on a just a CPU on a, on a regular computer, you're probably gonna get closer to 200. So it would take about five times longer to load than what you're seeing on the screen. So you might want to take that into account in terms of when to use the SDR console default waterfall review versus using the data analyzer, depending on how good your computer is. Now, one thing, if it does take a long time to load, or even if it does load quickly, you can save your files and load them back instantly. So if you hit the save button right here, I could write this by hitting save and then reload the file. Now these are little XML files. They don't take up a lot of space in your computer, but if you load them back, it will load instantly. Now you're not even gonna really see it reload because I already had it pulled up, but if I hit open right here, you'll see it, it finishes instantly. 
in just a matter of a couple seconds. So if your computer takes a long time to load it on the first round, make sure you hit the save button and take advantage of that so you can come back to your long IQ files. All right, so let's dive into working with this. So this one, as I mentioned earlier, is dynamic. So when you click around, you'll see the frequency moving on the left-hand side of the screen. Now you'll wanna make sure you do have your snap to settings um, done correctly in the main window of SDR console. We talked about that in episode two. I use 100 kilohertz. So if I click here to 104.74, which is not a frequency where any FM stations are, it's gonna round down to the nearest 100 kilohertz and snap me to 104.7. If I click here on 105.036, it's gonna round me off to 105.0 if you are using a 100 kilohertz step, for example. I think you can also do a 200 kilohertz step um, and have it round like that, but you'll definitely wanna do some, some kind of step setting so you don't end up on a bunch of weird frequencies and, and not being aligned with the DX you are listening for. All right, so the next thing is that we're going to now look for some of the DX signals. So we see this probably the largest of the three potential meteor burns we identified is here at 29 past. And this right here looks to be the strongest iteration of this meteor scatter on 104.5. So we're gonna click into it or click near 104.5 and unmute and see what it sounds like. And we can click again and again. And again, now sometimes clicking multiple times with your mouse hovered over exactly the spot is a great technique to dig out RDS data that is coming over the signal, particularly when it's a little bit weaker. Now this station is not strong enough for RDS and it's not gonna be an identified signal, but it's pretty cool that in a random eight minute period of time with no DX conditions, no meteor showers, etc., we found three meteor bursts just by using this feature. Now, even if there's no IDs, still cool to know that that's there and it definitely helps maximize the potential of that mode of propagation. Okay, so we can also do one more little trick with this analyzer that I find particularly useful for um, modes like eSkip or Tropo, which would be using the context clues of the modulation envelopes to find when stations might be taking a pause to do something like an ID. Now, of course, most of the time when stations go from song to song or commercial to commercial, you're not gonna have an ID, but if there is going to be an ID, it's usually going to be in those periods that are either preceded or followed by kind of a quick gap in the audio. So we're gonna look at 104.3, one of the signals uh, here in the left-hand side of the IQ file, and we're gonna click down here and see what's happening because you can see right here there's a little gap in the audio it looks like this is one element of audio moving into another element of audio so i happen to know that there's an id here the rest of it i don't but let's see what that sounds like and here's the hollies <laughs> carrie ann on cool radio paging carrie ann here's the hollies <laughs> okay so that station calls itself cool radio you can hear it going in from the dj doing an announcement into a song and then if i follow this up here it changes its character around here. So this is probably going into a different song. Let's check it out. He'll be back. More of your music next. The greatest hits of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Cool radio. So there's another ID. You can kind of see that these elements all look similar. They're probably commercials. And then they take another pause in the audio right around here. Let's check that out. Better and not get beat up. Visit so we're in, Pat's Power we're in a commercial. today, and you too can feel the Ferris difference. Ferris experience suspension. Two new residents have arrived. So in that case, it was just going from one commercial to another commercial, and you could kind of hear the thump of that sound effect right here in the window. We'll do one more time right here. It's our spring sales event here at Central Mazda in Plainfield, Connecticut. So that was also ad to ad, but you can tell that the second ad actually had a local um, business that would have helped you identify what this station is. So I just wanted to point this out to show you that you can use this feature to save time instead of loading through lots and lots of audio by skipping to exactly places where there might be station IDs or a change from one element to another that might 
uh, have like a local advertisement or something in there where you can ID your station. It's not foolproof, but it's something cool that you can use. And it really, again, comes in handy with eSkip or Tropo. So those really were the core features of the data file analyzer in SDR console. Again, we'll be back to talk a little bit more about reviewing specific types of propagation, but I hope that'll get you started and uh, look forward to hearing about everybody's experiences using these features. And thanks again for returning after this long pause to the FMDX for SDR console series. I'm Bryce Foster. Until next time, good DX and 73.